Hey there guys, this is Sam and Justin at the Survival Review and today we are going to be talking about the ever so wonderful <laughs> <laughs> Monkey Shines yes. by George Romero. Continuing and finishing off yeah. our little George Romero-thon. Mm -hmm. This is, like we said in the last video at the end, a guilty pleasure. Yeah. This movie's corny, yeah. cheesy, it's, it's silly, but god I love this movie. It's so entertaining. It's it's really just fun. Yeah, it is. Monkey Shines is about a guy who he's just doing great for himself. He's got a great girlfriend, he's in shape, and and it just starts off with him on a jog and he oh no, a dog, oh a car, and he gets hit by a car and now he's a quadriplegic. Yeah. What a what a happy way to start a movie. And as a quadriplegic, he can't really do anything in the house alone. He's a nurse who's played by George Romero's wife. Yeah. And she's great in this movie. Oh, yeah. Because um, we hate her. <laughs> yes, she's she's just a bitch. But <laughs> even with her, there's a lot of stuff that he can't really do. And so he's got this friend who, he's, he's a scientist and he conducts these tests on these monkeys. You can kind of tell that he's doing some shady shit yeah. with these monkeys because he's just injecting them with this weird fluid. Basically, he's injecting them with tissue from the human brain. Yeah. And seeing if they're like smarter or more intelligent. Yeah. And it's having an effect on one of the monkeys. He gives the monkey to this woman who's going to train the monkey to be, uh, I don't know if we said the main character's name yet, Alan. Train the monkey to be Alan's, like, helper. Around <laughs> the house. To, to yeah. help him j just with things that he can't do himself because he can only move his head. Yeah, so the monkey is smart enough to, like, dial the phone to put in the numbers and everything and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff just to help him out. And, you know, Alan, like, falls in love with the monkey. It's a cute yeah. monkey. It's, it's, a really, cute monkey. it's really fun just having this monkey around. He's actually, like, smiling for the first time in a while. Because after he gets back, it turns out that his girlfriend, that whole time when he was in the hospital, was cheating on him with his own doctor. Yeah, just the whole <laughs> fucked up thing. Yeah, so she leaves him immediately. Yeah. We, and you're just like, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the problem is the experiments with the uh, brain tissue in the monkey has a certain effect on the monkey. Basically, the effect that the tissue is having on the monkey is turning it into a psychic monster. Yeah, <laughs> basically. So throughout the movie, you see Alan is getting more and more attached to this monkey. And yeah. more and more, there's like this really intense attachment to each other. Mm -hmm. and, and the monkey is really like doing things without him even knowing yeah. for him. He kills the doctor and the, and the girlfriend. He kills the bird that's, yes. that's fucking annoying him all the yes, time. Because his nurse has this bird that is just flying around every time, getting in the way of everything, and landing on Alan's face at one point. Yeah. And like pecking at his eyes. Yeah. It's crazy. And, but it's also like, so the monkey is not only like, being affected by Alan, he's being affected by the monkey. Yes. And he's continually getting more and more enraged when the monkey is around. Yes. And the more enraged that he gets, the more the monkey tries to get rid of whatever's enraging him. And so it, it turns into this situation where if somebody comes into the house and they piss him off, that monkey's going to kill them. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> and it's terrifying to where you think the monkey might even kill Alan. Yeah. But throughout the movie, you kind of realize he, he can't really. Yeah because they they have this attachment to each other and they are one essentially yeah. by the end of the movie. Yeah. What really works about this movie is the cast in the movie. Yeah. The actor playing Alan is very likable. He is. So you feel so bad when all this bad stuff keeps happening to him. Yeah. And the fact that he got like paralyzed in the first place is just terrible. Mm -hmm. And so he's great, and then even as the movie progresses, he starts to have these like dark like outbursts. Maybe it was old age, huh? Maybe it was a rat that got it. Maybe you crushed it yourself when you jammed your foot into that slipper. Who gives a shit? It deserved to die. It fucking deserved to die. Like, there's a scene where his mom comes home to take care of him, and she's just this overbearing mom, just thinks she knows what's best for him and everything, and he just goes off on her in yeah. this one scene. It's so great. I cannot stand your bullshit. You're conniving, 
clinging, blood-sucking bitch. He's one of the best things that kind of strung you along in this film. Yeah, and, and when they finally decide, like, he eventually realized, God, this isn't me. I shouldn't be this angry. It's the monkey yeah. that's doing this. He says, get rid of the monkey, take it away from me, to his, his scientist friend. Yeah. And when, when they remove the monkey, he's feeling better. He's yeah. feeling happy again. And he starts to have, like, this relationship with the trainer. Yeah. And things seem to be going good until the monkey gets out again. <laughs> yeah. But then you have, again, we mentioned earlier, the nurse character, yeah. who, again, is just, she's such a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Like, she really is. <laughs> you really kind of, most of the movie, you're hoping, God, just kill her. <laughs> yeah. But acting-wise, she's great. Oh, yeah, no, she's she's great in the movie, but she was meant to be the yeah. character you hate. The friend character is really good. He's good at playing as kind of like this sleazy, like, scientist. Yeah. There's a table of scenes where the head of his facility wants to, like, shut him down and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. very typical, just typical stuff. But he's very entertaining as the role. And also, you even got Stanley Tucci in the movie. Yep. As the doctor. And we're like, where did he come in? Why, why is he here? <laughs> it's a really good cast. Yeah. For a really kind of stupid movie. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a really... Fun, entertaining. Yeah, the, the main problem with this movie is the fact that it's too long. Yeah. Which is crazy, because apparently this movie was actually a lot longer when they shot it. Mm. But it's like, really? Because this movie is pushing it. It's an hour and 55 minutes. And I feel it really should have been cut down a bit. It would have been a more solid movie if it yeah. was streamlined a bit more. It's not so long that it's like, oh, God, get on with it. No, but, but it, it's, it's... It definitely could have been, like, an hour, 40-minute yeah, movie. It's, and a, it's a movie that doesn't need to be nearly two hours long. Yeah. And also, the climax kind of drags a little bit. It goes on for a long. Granted, there's not a whole lot you can really do when your main hero can't move any part yeah. of his body and he's stuck in a wheelchair. And his only way to move around is to blow into a tube. Mm -hmm. So, granted, the, the climax would take a little bit longer, but it did kind of drag a little bit in the climax. Yeah, I can see that. This was uh, Romero's first studio film, yeah. and it clearly shows this movie has a lot more polish to it. It feels like a studio film, and apparently the studio made him put in a happy ending at the end. Yeah, which is not George Romero's style no. at all, and it feels kind of forced. Yeah, it does. It feels really weird that yeah. you're watching this George Romero film, and it ends really happily. Yeah. But you can tell that Romero was kind of put off by the experience that makes this movie because he went back to doing more independent stuff afterwards. And this movie does feel different from some of his other, his earlier work especially. But even then, like his 80s stuff with like Creepshow, which was a bit more financed, well financed, this movie still feels different. It feels more polished and more kind of run of the mill at times. Yeah. But what makes this movie so entertaining is all the stuff with the monkey. The monkey is incredible. Yeah. Because you can screw a movie like this up. Because yeah, there are countless like you know, killer animal movies, yeah. even, like, Shockma or something, like yeah. a killer monkey movie, where in a movie like that, they're just like, oh, the, the extent of their training is monkey jumps on guy, and then you put in attack sounds. Whereas this, they, they really had a well-trained monkey yeah. that you were convinced of everything that this yeah. monkey was doing, that this monkey could kill him. And the monkey was voiced by Frank Welker, so... Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So that just adds to the awesomeness. That's amazing. The monkey is great, although when the monkey is actually attacking people is when it gets cheesy and it's clearly them fooling around with a fake monkey. Yeah. But it's still cheesy and fun at the same time. Yeah. But the monkey, like I said, is the best part of the movie. He's so well trained and like you believe that this monkey is an actual legit character in the film. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it's one of these movies where I think it gets forgotten a lot, but the way I discovered this movie was through... There's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle where one of the characters is bound to a wheelchair, and the whole episode is essentially just a reference to monkey shines. And I, I'm watching great. the episode uh, when I was younger, and I'm like, this has got to be, like, referring to something. They didn't just make this shit up. <laughs> and then I looked it up, and I'm like, George Romero made this? What? Yeah. And when I first watched it, I was like, this is, this is great. And I still like it a lot to this day after rewatching yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, the story is, is solid enough for a movie. Like, it's unique enough for a film. Like, I like the plot idea of a character who's a quadriplegic and has this monkey helping him, but, you know, monkey's not quite there and stuff goes wrong. It's a very fun storyline, and the characters make it work because the movie has a lot of, like, legit dramatic moments in it. And that stuff's good, it's just, once you get to real monkey action, it becomes cheesy and fun. Yeah. Like, of course, the most epic shot of the movie of the monkey jumping and the lightning in the background. Yeah, it jumps over some bushes and some lightning strikes, and it's like, <laughs> this is great. Yeah. And then the character has a psychic connection to the monkey and everything. It's it's silly, but it's very entertaining. Yeah. You slime. You filth. I'm gonna take you apart. 
I'm gonna rip your fucking eyes out. Again, could be trimmed down though, definitely, but a solid, like, entertaining film that is not up there with Romero's, like, best. Yes, but it's, it's certainly an entertaining one. Definitely. So, out of 10. I'm gonna give this movie a 7 out of 10. I think it's solid, entertaining, really corny. If you don't like corny movies, I wouldn't recommend it. Mm -hmm. But if you like a movie that definitely has some great moments, some great characters, and some good monkey fights, then I highly recommend this one. Yeah, I agree, 7 as well. Definitely like a solid, like entertaining movie. Nothing classic or nothing great. I will say this though, I know you're saying that the movie is very cheesy. It does have like a mix of cheesiness and seriousness. Yeah, there there is some seriousness to the movie. It's yeah. not like just a, a schlock fest. Yeah, I mean that's kind of why the movie is long as it is, is that it is kind of like more of a, like a dramatic story about this character and everything. Who again, you want to see succeed, even though everything just keeps going wrong for him. And that's one of the strongest strengths of the film. But yeah, when you get down to it, it is essentially a cheesy movie. <laughs> Ellen, no! Stop! Ella! Get out of there! Get out of there, you bitch! And it's just overall a very entertaining movie from start to finish. Definitely. That's about all we've got to say about Monkey Shines. Yes. Kind of finishing off our George Marathon. Yeah, our tribute to the master, just one of our favorite directors. Yeah. He's really inspirational to both of us, I'd say. Yeah. Um, we really had a blast being able to talk about like three of these, these three movies. Because these are ones we've wanted to talk about for a while now, and not the best circumstances to be talking about them, but, yeah. you know, hopefully this sheds some more light on these movies. They're definitely worth checking out. Exactly. So, until next time, we'll be talking about um, a totally different kind of movie. Yes. I believe it wasn't even in the 90s, it was early 2000s. A werewolf movie by the name of Dog Soldiers mm -hmm. that we both enjoy very much. So, until then, we'll see you guys next time.